And welcome to the Bible Christian God, Brother Jacob, and uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. And uh, today's lesson, I'm going to get right into it because it's, uh, it's a, a lesson that is entitled Israel, the Teachers, and the Graduates. Israel, the Teacher, and the Graduate. And this is about a popular uh, need of clarity and understanding because I actually had put a question on the Facebook. And the reaction that I got from it so fast is what blew me away. I actually put it out on Sunday, and by the time, was that Sunday? That was, by, that was Sunday. And by the time Monday got, we had like 300 and something responses to the question, can the Gentile that's been taught by Israel teach the people of God? And... I mentioned in purpose, as you can see here, to save people from uh, the fake Jesus and Satanized Jesus. And if a Gentile has been brought up in his word by Israel, can he teach his people? Can he teach people, period? That's really what it comes down. Can he stand before a congregation of God's people and bring this book? Well, we're going to find out in this lesson that he indeed can. You know, I saw a lot of opposition to brothers saying, well, you know, if it's a congregation of Israelites, he can't teach them. I'm like, really? But we're going to find out. And uh, I'm not saying that the protocol is broken, but uh, believe you me, people are not understanding Israel's job, and that's what the bottom line is. It comes down to us understanding our job. And we it appears some do, and a lot don't. So that's why it moved me to do this lesson. It appeared to me that a lot of clarity needs to be brought forth. A lot of clarity needs to be brought forth. In this matter. And what I want to do is start this out because, first of all, you got to understand that we are the priests of God. Ain't got a problem that I hear people say the statement, we're the priests of all people. Well, we the priests of all people and we teach them, why aren't they able to come forth and bring forth what we taught them? Number two, we are the institution or the schools that God set up. I'm going to put it like that because we're in that season where you may have your son or your daughter that just graduated out of high school. You may have just had somebody graduate from a particular university. They got their degree, their BA, whatever. And they sat up on the teachers. You have children coming out of eighth grade going into high school. You sent your child to school to get an education and you expect them to progress to become a productive citizen and society. They have something to show forth because of the what? Teachings that they got in whatever field it is. Right. And for us to not understand as the children of Israel, the priest nation, that we don't have uh, results, and we're going to see in this Bible that we indeed need to have this results, and we're going to see in this book who the graduates are. A lot of people don't realize that when Paul went and taught the Gentiles, you want to know who his graduates really were? Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. It hit me like, hey, wait a minute. Why did Paul write epistles and letters? We're going to look at why he did that. And Israel, if you don't understand your job, is to have a graduate from your school, from this nation. It's almost like people come to America to be American citizens. How do they, how do you know they're American citizens? Because they do what? They act like it. They bring forth the fruits of an American citizen. How do I know you went to a university or a school to get a degree and sat under good teachers? Because when you come out that school, you have a skill set that you went there for. You don't have, you don't send your children to school to sit there and you want to, what? They never, they never graduate? Mm hmm? Who will send a child to the school when you don't have any graduates? Anyone in the day will say, look, I taught these. 
Look how good they are in what I taught them. Look how well they performed. This is a trophy or the result of teachers. This is what makes a teacher, should make a teacher proud, glad, humble, and look. Look at all the students that have come forth with master's degrees. Well, let's look at Israel, y'all, first so we can understand where the teachers are. I'm going to go to Ezekiel, sorry, Exodus 19 and 5 right quick. Exodus 19 chapter, verse 5. Now the Lord said something to our forefathers. And what color were those forefathers that he was talking to? Because I'm kind of like doing a little picture uh, thing here. This is the color of the people. This is the color of the people. That the Lord was talking to when he said what we're going to read. That's is 19, verse uh, 5 through 6. They were black folks. Those were our forefathers. That's his 19th chapter and verse, uh, they say 5. Look what it says. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then this shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. And this shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So this is the color of these people that he was speaking to, y'all. This picture came off out of the wall of the Egyptian pyramid. This is the picture of how they look, the color of these people. There was black folks that he said this to. But he didn't just say it right there only. Let's go to Deuteronomy 26 and 18. Deuteronomy 26 and 18. See, here's the key, y'all. We, the protocol is still in effect. I am talking about the product of the protocol. Can the product of the protocol teach the people of God if he's been taught by the priest of God? And to say he can't, you were saying, it's almost like you said, people that go to school, the university, shouldn't come out with degrees. They should just forever mingle in first grade, second grade. Yeah, how productive is that school, y'all? Nobody wants to see nobody in no school, you don't learn nothing. Or you stay in the same grade forever. Child, please. Exodus, sorry, Deuteronomy 26 and 18. 26 and 18. And it reads, <clears throat> And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be a peculiar people as he had promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations, which he had made in praise, and in name, and in honor, that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he has spoken. So the Lord had his kingdom of priests. He said he's going to make them high above all the nations, which he had made. It's going to be in praise and in name and in honor, that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Now let's go and see how Paul kind of put it right here in Romans 9 chapter. Let's go to Romans 9. Why did he say, he, Lord, we're going to have our people like this, y'all? Romans 9 and 4. We're going into the New Testament, and let's see what God said about these same children of Israel. Romans 9, chapter, and verse 4. And reads, Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Now watch this, y'all. Whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Now look. This is the color of the people he was talking about, y'all. Black folks. But it had me read from the top. Paul said, I was greedy with Israel. 
And if you know anything about hanging out in my neighborhood, y'all, you get real grieved with our folks. I had a brother right on there, man. I can't stand him with the Hebrew is a And I said, man, we can agree on that exact point. That's why Paul said he had a problem with Israel, but the job of Israel is what we just saw. The adoption, the covenants, the giving of the law. Now, look, this beyond the cross. How are you going to give a law that's died at the cross, y'all, that was destroyed at the cross? And we're in the book of Romans. How are you going to be a giver of law that don't exist no more or that was abolished at the cross? So that's obviously on our way to learn something. I always got to put a little something out there for that. But we also hold the service of God and the promises. Our father, the father was black, who confronts concerning the flesh, Christ came. And he said, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Now, look, I want to go and deal with this in Hebrews and show you how he made the new covenant with the children of Israel. New covenant, Hebrews 8 and 8. Because I want to make sure it's good and understood that Israel is on the table hard. Hardcore, y'all. It ain't done away with. Because if you did away with the Israelites, you don't did away with the service of God. You don't did away with the law, the covenants, the promise, the people he made a promise to, y'all. So Israel is hardcore on the table. So I'm going to read Hebrews 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Notice this new covenant didn't include uh, any denominations. We're talking about a nation of people, y'all. And notice what it says. Now the court of covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because that was by the blood of Adam. The new covenant is by the blood of Jesus. That's why I said, who Christ came according to the flesh. No, it's because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Now watch this. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. See, this is the key to understanding the new covenant. It ain't about all this outward wearing the brother's beard. No. It's that law in your heart. Because this is the receiving of Christ and receiving the new covenant that the law is in your mind. And he said, I'm going to write them in their hearts, and I will be to them. No, he said, to these. I'm going to be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Okay? So now, with that being said, let's go to uh, Isaiah 42 and 18, y'all. Isaiah 42 and 18. I'm sorry. I want to skip that. I want to, no, no, I don't want to skip that. Isaiah 42 and 18. Because I want to put it in your face. Israel, swear it in your face and show you that we are indeed in full effect to this day, y'all. Isaiah 42. And we're going to read that verse 18. Because on this new covenant, you got a lot of us that see, but we deaf. Here, but we ain't listening. That's why I'm going to start at verse 18. Isaiah 42 and verse 18. It says, Hear you deaf, and look you blind that you might see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Now notice, it said his messengers. Who are these messengers really are? Because a lot of people are blind to a lot of things, even though we see a lot, but we blind to a lot because we're not paying attention to this book. Our job is listed in this book. And watch what the Lord said right here for the first thing. This is one thing Israel got a problem with. He said, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness say he will magnify the law and make it honor. But our people are so stuck in what they call religion, we go to church on the first day of the week, to diminish the law when God said he will magnify the law that's why the very next verse, and we know we got this problem in the black community, hardcore, is talking about criminal justice system, prison house. Yes, it is. Right here, let's read. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. 
They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses, y'all. That's why I want to bring this little piece up right quick. Uh, Cause we did a little series on Israel. Hid away in prison houses, y'all. The statistics is ridiculous. We're the minority in the country, but we're the majority in the prison house. Why? Because we refuse to acknowledge God's law, which Paul told us we should be givers of the law, not killing the law. Right. And we just read, he's going to make it honorable, but we want to diminish the law that goes beyond the cross. I put it like that. But he said, they are here in the prison houses, therefore pray and not deliver, for a spoil and none says restore. Who among you will get into this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? That's why when I drop it on the street with any brother, I say, hey man, I don't even have to know your name, but I know you if you black. One of these four conditions that exist between me and you. Either one of us been in jail, between me and you, we know somebody in jail right now. Number three, you either know somebody on their way to jail or just got out of jail. And number four, guess what? One of us is most likely to get picked up by the by. We got a, a criminal justice system problem, y'all. I thought they just did a study out in what Ferguson, Missouri, talking about the police department of bias. They had a thing out of Chicago, it's bias, New York, bias. And then once that verdict that just went down, not guilty, and it was clearly a murder by the cop on a what? Young black man. And who most likely end up in jail, y'all? Okay, I ain't got I don't even have to know your name. I already know we got you know we got criminal justice problem. But he said this is gonna be a time and we're living in this time right now. Well let's see what who this is. Who this is, y'all? Verse 24 that's going through this thing. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Who did this, y'all? Now most of us like to think it's the white man and his uh endeavor to uh kill us off. But no, we feel, we don't put it. He will give you don't give him that much credit, y'all. Right. When you refuse to read the Bible, that's what you think. When you read the Bible, you realize the very next verse is so true. It says, uh, "Did not the Lord, He against whom we are sinned." Then we read what the Lord said. He gonna magnify the law, make it honorable. Mm -hmm. And just to prove my point, pick a church in there tomorrow on Sunday. You go in there with that law. I'm going to give you 20 minutes, and I'm being real nice. Talking about, hey, you got to keep the law system, brother. Why y'all in here on Sunday? They're going to be all upside your head, all looking at you like, oh, you need prayer and all of that. And, and you, you're going to be like, this is why, y'all. Because the Lord did it. Why? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore, he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and strength of battle, and it had set him on fire round about, yet he knew it not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. That's why our neighborhood is so full of the heat of violence. That's why it's full of the heat of HIV, poverty. We need a job. We the last hired first five. Okay? This is why it's going on. But look, we're going to push on a little further because I'm going to get to what we supposed to be doing, y'all. What we supposed to be doing. Now, one other nail in the coffin. <laughs> one last nail, and then we're going to move. Let's go to do around 28 chapters. And the last, I'm going to start at 28 and 15. Do around 28 and 15. Because the Lord told our forefathers something that's very, you know, that was pivotal in our existence. And we're going to skip all the way down. When we get to Deuteronomy 15 chapter, we ain't going to read all of this chapter. because that's a whole identity chapter. This is a black man's ID card right here, y'all. Mm -hmm. This chapter right here, know that. Yep. Okay? Anybody got a problem with this? Man, how you know you a Hebrew or the white? Dude, run them right here. It's over. By the time you get to the last verse, which we're going to get to, they're going to know that they is real. Anyway, but look, right here, verse 15. He said, but it's your kind of past. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, we didn't hearken, y'all. That's why he said we got to read. They wouldn't obedient to his voice, nor would they be obedient to his law. 
Therefore, verse 16 said, Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and where he is. Look, I want y'all to think about that verdict up there in Minnesota. Yep. Cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shalt be in the basket in thy store. I never forget, man. I had to go to a brother's store. I tried to support, you know, a fat brother and sister. I couldn't even get a change for a twenty dollar bill at two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, dang, man. Let me go to the Arabs, okay? I couldn't get change for a twenty in the afternoon. That's not bad. He tried to do his thing, but uh, it is what we read. What we read. That's what it is. Right. So now let's get to the very last. Uh, verse in this chapter. It's a long chapter, y'all. One of those long ones in the Bible. But this one right here ends with immutable fact and being here in this great state of Maryland or near D.C., you can go down to the African, what they call it, the new African American Museum. Yep. And uh, believe you me, if you think of uh, a favorite or fables or giving you some fantastic story, uh, no. Here we go for the read, what they got in there. And it says right here, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, wherever I spake unto thee, thou shalt see no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Now, Egypt is sit right next door to Israel, y'all. It's like going from America to Canada. You can go by boat, but most of the border of Canada, between the U.S. and Canada, is land. You can just walk right over Canadian, to the Canadian border. And they can just walk right over us to us. Same way Egypt and Israel. But this is a ship that's talking about the ship of slavery, y'all. Mm. Okay? I want you to think about the movie Amistad. Did anybody else come over here to be sold? Everybody else migrated, y'all. But did anybody else come over here in this condition point blank? No. Think about 12 years of slavery. Think about Amistad. Think about the underground. Talk about slaves. Think about uh, 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 roots. Django, uh, Django, Django, is that the name? Django. Huh? The Django. The Django, yeah, that movie. A couple of old, a lot of other ones, y'all. But now look, now that we start to Israel is, let's look at what God said to Israel. Let's go to Amos. We're going to go to Amos 2 and 10. Because we are the teachers, y'all. We the ones that God said this to, y'all. And the Gentile is the student. Right. How I know he's a student? Because this is written right here. Amos 2 and... We're going to start at uh, Amos 2 and 10. Amos 2 and 10. It reads, also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and your young men for natural rights. Is it not so, even thus, O ye children of Israel? Said the Lord, to God raised up our people. The one that hid away from prison houses. When he speaking to them, he told these black folks, Israel, I raised up your sons for now's right and right. Now let's go to the third chapter, the same Amos. Amos 3 and 1. Here's his word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Notice. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Now look, God said he only knew us. It's almost like your child. You raised your child. You gave your child the best of everything. You call them a holy people. You call them a son. Look, you the best of the crop. I gave you everything you need to be successful. Then he goes up in the school or goes out into the world and like that prodigal son lives a righteous life. A right, no, a righteous life. Like, where you get this stuff from? Well, that's why the Lord said He punished us for all our niggas, all of ours, y'all. We can't get away with nothing. And we think it's all contributing to, well, that white man just want to be picky on me. No, that's because of what we just read. Because our forefathers, the ones of all the families of the earth, 
that he said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all of your iniquities. So now look, let's go to Psalms 147. Psalms 147 and verse, uh, we're going to Psalms 147 and 19. This whole book, y'all, put together by black folks. All the prophets are black. All the apostles are black men. That's why it's written like this, Psalms 147 and 19. And he reads, He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they had not known them. Think about that. Praise ye the Lord. So we the only ones that knew God's judgments and his statutes. What do you think about everybody else? Right. Stand up in the dark. They need to be taught about God. And uh, let's go clearly into Matthew 28 chapter and verse 18. Matthew 28 and verse 18. This means we are the institution for the statutes and judgments of God. That's right. Yeah. Period. Off the entire planet, the nation is we that institution, y'all. You want to learn about God? You got to go get you a Hebrew Israelite. That's flat because he had dealt with no other nations at the contents and statutes and his laws and his command. That's why he said, you only have our known of all the sons of the earth. So he, he gave us his judgments. And now look what Jesus said right here. Matthew 28 and uh, 18. That's where we at. Matthew 28 and 18. Because remember, he showed his word unto Jacob and his statutes unto Israel. He had not done so with any nations, y'all. Nobody on this whole planet had that. Because remember, he said he's going to place his on high above all nations by giving us what? His teachings. That's why we have high above all nations. That's why his Paul said, look, we hold the service of God. We have the covenants. The new covenants with us. Because he had dealing with anybody else, y'all. God is the same yesterday, today, and he changed not. Now watch this. Look what Paul said. I mean, Jesus said, right, rather, here. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power was given me unto me in heaven and the earth. Now this is under the new covenant. This is after Jesus' death and resurrection, which made a way. This is under the new covenant. That's made a way for what? Let's read this. He said, go you therefore talking to Israel and teach all nations. Now, wait a minute. Under the new covenant, we're supposed to go and teach all nations. Under the old covenant, the Lord kept with Israel. Under the new covenant, he had Israel. You go and teach all nations because all nations don't know about God. They need to be what? Talk. we the institution. And we're going to look at an example of how severe or how strong this institution is enforced. Now notice, he said, go and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, which is Jesus, and the name of the Son, which everybody knows is Jesus, and then of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus told you, he's going to send the Holy Ghost in my name. So who said, who was that that said, he going to, the Father going to send the Holy Ghost in my name? Jesus. So that's the name of the Holy Ghost. Now notice what our job is. Teaching them. So now we're going to teach our nations how did that our nations can't be saved. How did that we sort of say, because you got a sect out there talking about, ain't nobody else going to be saved. Only Israelites going to be saved. They haven't even read this to have that mindset of talking about, only Hebrew Israelites going to be saved. Everybody else going to hell. That's why I guess this. Straight up in opposition to this. Therefore, he said, teach them, because they don't know, which means that makes them what? Students. With the institution of teaching them to what? To observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Has the word ended yet, y'all? Nope. So the Lord is still with Israel. 
to the end of the world because he gave everything to Israel. And when he gave Israel, everything to Israel, y'all, let's go to Luke 12 and 48. We are the teaching institute, y'all. And we are the teachers, and we are to teach the people, and we are to teach all nations what the Lord said, that they might be saved. But this right here is a serious problem amongst Israel because they think, and we're going to show you even Peter thought the same way some of these Hebrew Israelites think, oh, we don't, we don't have to keep coming with one other, another nation. Even after Jesus' death and resurrection. Well, look, Luke 12 and uh, 12 and 40 is what I'm going to read, but to give you a context, this is a man that, had, that was uh, the servant of the Lord and he was a steward, and the Lord required of this man certain things. And when this man didn't do the will of the Father, which he knew, look what the Lord said right here. Compared to those that know not, we're going to read Luke 12 and 48. I'm not going to go into this whole parable because they're taking this beyond this parable. But the principle of this is clear. When you look at we being the people of God, that's why the Lord whooped them so bad to us in slavery. That's why your son, our sons and daughters, are most likely to die in the streets. Our sons and daughters are hid away prison houses. We are most likely, like I said, I don't have to know your name, but if you're black, you either been in jail, on your way to jail, or between we, me and you, one of us been there, or we know somebody in there right now. But look what the Lord said right here. But he that knew not and did commit things Words of stripes, he shall be beaten with few stripes. Now, I want to kind of harp on this. If we are to teach the nations, the Lord gave it all to us to teach. Now, the student don't know any better. It's almost like you take your little three-year-old, no, I put it like this, take a little five-year-old and send him to school. We send him up to what? Head start, kindergarten. We do not expect him to, grad, to know what the eighth grader knows. We don't expect them to come out with a master's degree. And if they do excel, that we call it child prodigies. You know, an anomaly, like, incredible. You know how to play piano and you're only six years old and you're good. You're a child prodigy. That's why he said, hey, he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with fruit stripes. That's why the Gentiles right now, oh, look like they got it going on. Well, it used to look like they got it going on. The time is winding down. But everybody used to wonder, why is it that white folks seem to be living in this world of, you know, candy and coated dreams and everything is so wonderful and gentle coated and lovely and the flowers and the daisies are coming up. And then you go to the black neck folks' neighborhood, you're like, man, them dudes, they over there snapping off, having a fit because of this, y'all. For unto whomsoever as much is given, and Israel was given everything, we read that. And of him shall be much required. Because we the teachers, y'all. But notice. And to whom men have committed much of, of him, they shall ask the more. So we being the teachers, we got to teach the, the ones that don't know any better. This is our job. Because the Lord will require of us. Because we've been given the most. They've been given the least. But we're going to find out when they've been given much, when they've been taught much, then it's required of them. It is required of them. Now let's go to Romans uh, 2 and 13. And look at the student, y'all. Yeah, that's why we so ate up. That's why, look, we got it real hard, y'all, compared to, on average, when you look at, look at them uh, HIV statistics, the poverty statistics, most likely to get shot statistics, HIV statistics. I keep statistics on and on and on. Why? Because he required much of our people. Our forefathers are the ones that God said, I have shown you my word. But the Gentiles, we're going to show you what the students have been sitting at, y'all. And right here, Paul even tells you right here, Romans 2 and uh, Romans 2nd chapter. And I want to start actually. I don't want to throw it off the precept. 2 and 14. What's what Paul says right here? 
For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, they didn't, didn't receive it, y'all. We read who the giver of the law was in the hands of Israel. Right. We are the givers of the law. The Gentiles don't have the law. But watch this, y'all. Paul just told you that. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature. Now, watch this. By nature, the things contained in the law. Now, what is this talking about? Because if you look at their education system, they, if you look at how they do carnal things, that's why I said by nature. Look, they don't want to set up all these grade levels up. They don't want to stop. You got to have a BA to get this certain job. Or you got to have a master's to get that job. Or when you really are on top, you get a profession. You become a professor. They establish levels of requirements, levels of attainment. And the law is the same way, y'all. That's why he said they do by nature the things contained in the law. These have not the law. Are a law to themselves. So if they're a law to themselves, then guess what? They haven't seen the law that they need from God. Right. That's why they advance the technologies and all, all the common things of the world. They have all the common things of the world. And they, they're showing you in nature, look, what's required in the spirit when you understand this book. That's why you send your child out there to, to high school and you come back at the end of the year and they sit up there. Uh, I don't know no more than what that came in. What you gonna do? You gonna pull them out that school because you expect your child to advance with something like that. It's the same way when we teach the Gentile the word of God. They advance. They go up and up in the levels. And I listen to my Spanish Gentiles. I'm like, man, you the graduate. And we show you the graduates are y'all in this book. Well, look. Uh, verse 15. We show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. And this is how the Gentiles are in the carnival. This is why we know we got to get certain certificates to say, hey, look, I'm qualified for this job or for that job. Well, it's the same way with Israel. This is how our institution is, y'all. And we're going to see that in a minute. I want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 10 chapter and show you what table they sitting at. Show you what I got, what the student is right now. He ain't been he ain't been talking about Israel. This is the table that he's sitting at right now. Because the new covenant we read with Israel. Them churches that set up tomorrow, this is the table that they're actually sitting at, y'all. Right here. We're gonna read this, right? Because the Gentiles is the one that gave us Sunday. The law gave you today. Okay? The one that the Lord said, I'm gonna make honorable. Yes, sir. But this is the table that the student is sitting at right now. But I say, the things we read on the other side, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 20. This is where the student is sitting at right now. Verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. See, because they weren't given the law. They don't have the law. They know not the judgments of the Lord. That's why the Lord said, you only Israel have I known of all the families of the earth. So, who the Gentiles have been dealing with? They've been sacrificed to devils and not to God. Notice, and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Now watch this. Verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Stupid is sitting at the table of devils. Israel is suddenly sitting at the table of the Lord. Which it says right here, you cannot be partaker of the table, Lord's table and the table of devils. So you got the Lord's table with its feasts, laws, and statutes, commandments, and all of that. On one side, then you got the table of devils, which you got to Christmas, Easter. That's why everything is whitewashed. Christmas, they say, have a Merry Christmas. That ain't in this book. Easter Sunday with the rapes. That ain't in this book. Going to hell. That ain't in this book. That comes from the table of devils. So we as teachers, because they don't know God, what is our job? To instruct them. Just like you sending your child to school, when the Gentiles come to you, or you deal with the Gentiles, your job is to teach them. Right. Not say they're going to hell. We just show them, look, this was on the Lord's table. Because the book says, repent and be baptized every one of you. What do repent mean? Change your mind. 
So you get the Gentile opportunity to change his mind. Now, if you don't want to change his mind and you want to stay at the table with devil, that's on him. You done did your job, Israel. Peace out. Because at the end of the day, the Lord going to judge him. But we're going to look at the graphic, so we're going to keep it on the good ground. He's going to keep this on the good ground. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 11. You know. Let's look at the st current state of the stoop. Ephesians 2 and 11. Make sure my time is tight. Ephesians 2 and 11. This is what the Lord had Paul write to the student. Wherefore, remember that ye being times past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. Notice, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, there's aliens for the institution of those that are taught by God, that are instructed by God, and that he told to go teach all nations to y'all. There's aliens from God. That's why Jesus said, go teach them. Because they're aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's the state of the student, y'all. But notice, it says in the next verse, but now in Christ Jesus, you sometimes were far off, I made now by the blood of Christ. Now, this is where the connection got to be made right, or they still in the state of being aliens and strangers from the covenant of promise. You got to get the blood of the Jesus that died for everyone. And if you don't get that, you still an alien. That's why we're dealing with the Passover. That is the blood that we got to go by. Not the blood of a Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning resurrection. No, that Jesus ain't the one that's going to connect you. But look, we're going to show you how uh, 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 Paul, how the Lord told Paul, when he, after his death and resurrection, look what he told him about, told him about the Gentiles. Let's go to Acts 26 and 16. And then we're going to look at the protocol, and then we're going to look at this thing and see some graduates. Like I said, Timothy, graduate. Titus, graduate. Philemon, graduate. That's why the Lord had Paul write those letters. Because Paul was dangling his graduates in front of everybody. Hey, look. Timothy, he's a, he's a, he's a minister of God. Yes, sir. He left the table of devils and sat and sit, sat at the table of the Lord. And the Lord made him a minister. We're going to see that. Yes, sir. You're going to tell me he can't stand and minister before people of God. Child, please. Well, we're reading it in Acts 26 and uh, 16, how Paul said the Lord spoke to him. And we're going to read this here, Acts 26 and 16. It reads, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Because Paul was under what we can call uh, Judaism. Okay, nowadays, that's for lack of a better term, what they call Judaism. Because Judaism don't believe that the Messiah has come. And Paul, in his early days, he was persecuting those that did believe the Messiah came. So I'm just trying to make it as simple without going complex. So now, watch what he was to do, y'all. And uh, the Lord sending him. Now, this Jesus talking to him concerning the Gentiles to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan unto God. Yes, sir, the children are sent, the students are sitting under the power of Satan. That's why everything they got in there tomorrow, Come, we can show you. The only thing they got right is the name of the Lord. Everything else comes from Satan, y'all. That's why God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. That's why you take God's law in that church tomorrow. I'll be real nice and give you 30 minutes. 
I'm gonna set my clock, I'm gonna be sitting out there waiting in the car for you. Man, how could you be back so soon? And they hate God's laws. Because that's what the table of the devil's got on. No laws of God. Uh-uh-uh. No. Don't put that, bring that up in here. Because they are in the power of Satan. So Paul's job was to turn it from darkness to the light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin. <coughs> and this is the job of every teacher. Amen. This is my job, y'all. We're going to turn it from the power of Satan. Not that they say they're going to hell. Right. Like you got this one sect out there, all the white folks going to hell. Mm. Really? You ain't even doing no job there, man, because our instructions and teachers is to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. Notice that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. <coughs> this is the job of the teacher. That's why he said you go teach all nations. Because this is what we got to do, y'all, because don't nobody else know God will like we do. And Paul going to tell him. We're going to read it in a little bit. Uh, so now let's go and look at this uh, protocol right quick. Because when I put that question out there, people start saying, oh, man, you know, Gentile can't teach no Hebrew is like, like, dude, that wasn't even a question. You're ignoring the fact that I said a Gentile that's been taught by Israel. Right. That's the first thing. This Gentile has been taught by the teacher, instruction. You know what they said, the Lord. Can he go and teach the people of God? Can he stand before the people of God? Can he go and deal with the unbelief? I saw a Gentile put out there. Y'all still jealous. And it's really changed to this day, y'all. Still jealous that when young, a Gentile pick up this book and he learn and he know and we gonna taught him. Why would I be upset at that? Right. Now come on, man. dude. I want you, man. I'm gonna sit back and be like, get him, show him. I told you. I'm glad you're doing it. Please proceed. You making me look good. Straight up. That's how it is other people. Man, we won't teach us from other nations. Because that means we've done our job. Right. Right. That means is when we have done our job when we have a Gentile be a Korean what, standing in the pulpit. That is the symbol. You have accomplished the mission. And if you were against that, you were against the mission of turning people from the power of Satan to God. You really are. Because you maintain, you keeping them small, you being respecter of persons. And let's see right quick what the book says about, man, hold on. Before we go to the accident chapter, let's go to James' third chapter. Because James had to tell our folks this right here. <clears throat> I ain't going to put a certain person out there on front street, but after I quoted this to them, they had to consider their position. Uh, look what it says right here, James third chapter, and verse uh, James three, sorry, three and two. James three and sorry, I'm looking dead at James second chapter, verse one. That's what you want to. The book of James, second chapter, verse one. It's one verse so to have you be like, uh-oh. Look what it says. Mm -hmm. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. Mm -hmm. Think about it. This Gentile been learning, you've been teaching this Gentile, he's been in this book 10, 15 years, and you mean to tell me he can't stand up in the roster and teach nothing? Why not? See, this is the problem. My people got respect their personisms in them. I'm gonna put it like that. I don't like to think we racist, but they respect the persons. That's bad, especially in some camps. Like I had to tell the Gentile, you welcome to come teach at the BCOG. We not respect the person. We respect this book. That's what we respect. Because guess what? This book is bigger than any minister out there, y'all. Ain't no man out there, I don't care who you talking about, what else, whatever his name is, he ain't bigger than this book. Right. And if you think he is, you're a respecter of persons. 
And we're going to read about what the Lord said by respect of person. We'll get there. But I'm going to go back to this Acts 10 chapter. And Paul, Peter had to be shown something. Seven years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Let's go to Acts 10 chapter. Acts 10. And this is the protocol. This is beyond the cross. Acts 10 and verse 1. Now, this is a Gentile. I'm going to give you the background. This is a Gentile. And uh, 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 Acts 11 chapter will tell you that. This is a Gentile. And further down, we'll see it. We're going to see it. But Acts 10 and 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea, Caesarea rather, called Cornelius, of the satirian, uh, uh, satirian of the band called Italian band. Those are your Gentiles, y'all. Italy as a Gentile nation. Those are your white folks. Let me put it like that. Make it plain. Uh, a devout man. Now look, this is a devout man. One that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. Notice. He saw an avenger evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him, saying unto him, Cornelius. Now, this is at 3 p.m. Ninth hour of the day is 3 p.m. Okay? So this is in the afternoon. As the sun is getting ready to go down. On his way down. 3 p.m., y'all. The angel came into him and said unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayer and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Now, God listened to this man's prayer. This white man, I'm going to put it like that. His prayer, because he what? He was devout and he feared God. On the way to learn stuff, that's some of the qualities of getting your prayer heard. Fearing God, the Lord, he'd be like, Oh, you fear me? Oh, man, what you got to say? So, on the way to learn something. His prayer came up for a memorial before God. And now sent men to Joppa and called for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. You mean to tell me this devout man that feared God and he said gave much alms to the people and prayed to God and his prayer came up before God for a memorial. He still needs to be told something, y'all. Now you got people out there that call themselves prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't came in contact with the teachers that God gave Israel, you in trouble. And that's why the Lord was trying to get this man. He said, Let me get him into my institution. Right. Let me get him in there so he could teach others. And I'm going to show you that. In this lesson. Now look. Let's get down. To verse 9. I ask him to read because the story needs to be fully understood. Because you got Christians that's under the, that's sitting at the table of devils talking about this is talking about food. Right. Okay? But we're going to crush that on the way to learn something. It says, And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent him to Joppa. Now here we go. The next day. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Now, this is lunchtime. Okay? This is lunchtime. That's why it said he was hungry in the very next verse. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were ready, made ready, he fell into a trance. Now, this is right around lunchtime. And he saw a heaven open as a certain vessel, descending unto him, and he had a great sheet. Knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, where it were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and of wild beasts, and creeping things, and of fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now watch Peter's reaction. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean, which means the dietary law did not die at the cross, y'all. Right. On the way to learn something, because this really ain't talking about food, y'all. But just in case you got people out there that's on that, you take them here. Beyond the cross, Peter was still observing the Lord's dietary law. But that ain't what we, we, we're hankering here for. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God had cleansed, 
that shall not that uh, that call not thou come. This is done twice, which means three times, and the vessel was received up into heaven. Now Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. Behold, now think about that. Peter was down like man. Because he knew it, it didn't talk about the diet at all. He knew that. Right. That wasn't even in his mind. He like, man, mm, okay, what's going on? So now, uh, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon was certain, which was some name, Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said, the only way to learn is some angels are spirits. Right. Okay. Said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. Now, why couldn't this angel or the spirit, which is holy, sit there and teach Cornelius? He could not break the, break the protocol of God's institution of learning. Could not. You got to get taught by Israel. This is the protocol. But what is the product of the protocol? Right. That's what people are crazy about. Man, like I said, you send your child to school, the institution, you send him to the protocol, and he's going to come out, and he don't, he don't graduate. He in eighth grade, he come out in high school, he go to high school, and it's like, uh, you don't know how to count? Well, how did you come out of eighth grade? <laughs> hey, the teacher's product is the student's ability to perform or actually be a servant of God from the institution of God, y'all. And we're going to find out this is what happened with this Gentile, y'all. We're going to see the graduates in a minute. But the spirit, the spirit told them, look, I sent these men to you. So now, uh, let's get down to verse 22. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and a good report among all the nation of Jews was warned from God by a holy angel. So we see the spirit, this holy angel could not teach Cornelius because the protocol, the institution of God is still in effect to this day. And even this angel had to warn him and say, look, to send for thee into, into, into his house and to hear words of thee. Why he had to hear words from Peter, y'all? Why couldn't he hear from the angel? That's up there with God right now. Because God ain't breaking that protocol. But we sure better have product. We sure better have students. And we're going to read. That's why Paul put Timothy on there. He wrote two letters to about Timothy to show you, make sure you understood. I am proud of this man. This is my graduate. Even called him son. Right. He said, my son, Timothy. That's how I know Timothy was a graduate. Because Timothy is a Gentile. He sat at the table of devils, and Paul took him from the table of devils, and he graduated to the table of the Lord. That's our job. And watch this. Right here, it's breaking it down. Peter had to be told something clearly. And let's read this. Skip down to verse 28. It says, And he said unto them, Ye know how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. Now look, this was in Peter's mind seven years after Jesus' death and resurrection. He was still feeling it was an unlawful thing for us black folks to be dealing with those white folks when it comes to religious now. So watch this. But God, notice what it says, but God had showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. This is what this was about. This is what the Lord was showing Peter via the holy angel that he first sent to Cornelius because of his prayer so that he can be told by the teacher what he needs to do. Because all that praying and all of that, we can show you Matthew 7 chapter, you cast not devils, you ain't touch this rest, you will work over there. The Lord ain't even here. You come up in that last resurrection and um, I don't know about y'all, but all your business on the table. And the Lord said, I'm just telling them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So here, the Lord had warned him because he warned him to come into his institution of teachers. Straight up. Therefore, like I said, what God had told me is that I should not call any man coming or unclean. 
Therefore I came unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, For what the ten have you sent me? For me. <clears throat> and Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Now notice how this holy angel came in the appearance of a man. Right. Which is a spirit being. So we see angels can have, they can shape shift them. We can go and look at different angels in different shapes. But he appeared as a man, but he couldn't even teach this Gentile. He had to go get the teacher that God ordained, bring his book to the stoop. So now let's skip down to verse 33. Immediately, therefore, I said to thee, and thou hast well done that I come. Now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that I commanded thee of God. Why he got to hear all things that I commanded thee of God? Did we not read what the Lord said? Israel only have I known. Right. He said he showed the statutes unto Jacob and his commandments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any other nation. So they got to hear what God commanded us. That they might be what? Saved. That's why the Lord said go teach all nations. Because they ain't heard what the Lord told us, y'all. You can tell with the rabbits and the eggs, they can't count. One, two, three. You can't get through the eight and three nights from last night to tomorrow morning. They ain't that those, That's what little kids do. That's what little babies do. Little silly stuff. The students, they run around dumb. It is our job as a teacher to inform them. Look, look, son. Look, look, child. Come, come, come. Come here. Okay, this is A. This is B. And this is C. That's what we got to do. This is our job. Now, see the child and throw them in the make a fire. Like you got some sex out there saying. And then watch what Peter had to be shown. He understood at this point. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, notice y'all, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Think about it. Cause you got some brothers running around. Oh man, I, I know he know the Bible, but he can't stand up there and teach Israel. You being a respectful person, this man been sitting in this class ten years and he can't teach Jack. He is not worthy to go up at that roster that you told him. What God said, Lord, he can't regurgitate that back. That's almost like you got you know professors that send people in, help them get what master's degrees. Hey man, I'm sending you a, a guy talk master's degree. He gonna come in there and uh, fix your company for you. That's going to be a proud professor when he got that person with a master's degree in there. Man, that's a student. That's a product out of UIC or, I mean, sorry, ULV. University of Chicago. State of Nevada University. Mar University of Maryland. All the professors want their students to go out there. Hey, go out there and do great things. That's what the teacher expects out of his students. So Paul finally, when Peter said, look, I see that God is no respect of person. But here we go. But in every nation, he that what fears him and working righteousness is accepted with him. Accepted with Into this institution, y'all. Because they got to be taught. And we're going to look at the graduates. It said, for the word which God sent to the children of Israel. We read that. Preach of peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all, y'all. Lord of all. So now uh, I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 33. No, I'm going to 33. I'm going to skip down to... No, uh, now let's go to Romans, brother. Let's go to Romans, second chapter. Let's go to the book of Romans and really nail this teacher thing down and watch how I translate it to the student. We're going to go from the teacher, then we're going to look at what the student does. Romans 2 and verse 17. Romans 2 and verse 17. Watch this, y'all. Behold, thou called a Jew and wrestles in the law and makest thy boast to God, and we do. Oh, we be his friend. We know what they don't know nothing. We, you know, you don't know who he's dealing with. Just want to boast all day in God. Just get so arrogant and high minded. That's how Israel is. But notice, knows his will. Yes, we do. <laughs> and prove us the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Who else gonna do that, y'all? Then the Lord said, You only have I known. Mm -hmm. Then he said that Italian, he said that Italian to Peter. 
even though he was a, a prayer warrior, devout man, fear God. Look, you got to get the things that are being proved as things that are more excellent things. We instructed out of all. Now notice, and are confident that thou art a guide of the blind? Yes, we are. Because the blind is sitting at the table with them. We are the guide to the left and bring them out. That's why he told Paul, look, you got to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. You got to take them from darkness to the light. That's what a teacher's job is for. Even in natural things. That's why we have what's called preschool. You know, where they're down there, they kind of get the feel of letters and A, B, C's and e, one, two, threes. Then we put them in first grade, okay? Now you got to get, you know, form phrases, A, E, I, O, U, and then we take them to second grade and third grade. That's why you got a middle school, okay? Now we bring them on up. I right, you getting right there. You ready for high school, okay? A little more late on to you, okay? Now when you get in high school, now you're ready for institutions of college, community college, universities. Now you're going for that degree. You know, that you got associates and you had all these things to do what the Gentiles set up. But guess what? That's what's happening in the spiritual realm. And we're going to see that because watch this. He says, and a light of them that are in darkness. Yes, we are. Notice he said, being a, said, an instructor. Notice what it says. In, what's in the colleges, y'all? Instructors, eh? I'm going to go to the University of uh, Maryland. I'm going to see them what? An instructor. Even online, yeah, online what? Instructors. It's called a class, y'all. And a class has what? Teachers. And when you go into a class, you expect to graduate to be able to do that thing which they instructing and teaching you about. And eventually, you become an instructor and you become a teacher. It's the same. Same thing being played in the natural is what's in the spiritual side. But no, she said, an instructor of the foolish, and we are, and teachers of babes, we're supposed to be, okay, which have form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Now, what I want to do is go to uh, 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 St. John 4, 22, and then we're going to come back. Keep your place in that Romans 2, second chapter, because Jesus says something here. Keep your finger on that Romans second chapter. We're going to bounce in there again. Look what Jesus said here to this woman that thought she was Israel. See, you got a lot of people that want to be us. Right. <laughs> but they not. You got some of us calling Indians and Puerto Rican. No, mm, it just wasn't brought over here on the whole slave ships, child, please. So if you ain't been here in prison houses, and believe you me, the Indian population existed in the prison houses amount to a hill about, about that much compared to us. But if you had been here with prison houses, your forefathers weren't brought here in the whole slave ships. You ain't nowhere near the category of the priest of God. But watch what Jesus said right here in St. John. I said four. I got you. Four and twenty-two. Look what he said. He said uh, to this woman. Because she thought she was us. But she wasn't. So the Lord said, ye worship, ye know not what. Why is this, y'all? Because the stranger was outside of those that God had taught. He, she was outside the institution that God set up to be the teachers. So he told her, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. The salvation is of the Jews. How do we know what we worship? Because we read he showed his laws and his statutes to Israel, not any other nation. So you know to know what they you know what to worship, you got to come through us. That's why it furthermore says, but the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why you gotta get the right teachings. That's right. And our job is to turn them from power of Satan to God, so they can graduate from the table of devils. Straight up. Because if you say, if we were trying to keep at the table of devil, y'all, we is not doing our job. Flat out. So let's go back to Romans. Romans, uh, I don't want to go to Romans 3rd chapter, Romans 3 and 1. Back to Romans 2nd chapter, but actually I need to go to 3, then we're going into that 3rd chapter. Because the Lord told you, even, this is beyond the cross, y'all. 
Because you can't change the institution of God. Jesus came through us that the whole world might be saved, y'all, by his people that he ordained to teach all nations so they can be saved. Now watch this. Romans 3 and 1. Romans 3 and 1. He said, what advantage has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Notice, much every way. This is what the New Testament promotes, y'all, that it's much every way this profit. Chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. That's why Jesus said salvation is the other Jew. But watch this. Let's back up into this Romans second chapter. And I'm going to start at uh, verse uh, 19. Make sure I get, I'm sorry, verse uh, 25. It says, for, for circumcision, we have Romans 2 and 25. It says, for circumcision truly profited it, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Now, this is on another lesson, but based on your keeping of the law, really, is what your circumcision in the heart is based upon. That's what the Lord looking at. And I know a whole lot of Israelites that call themselves under circumcision, but their conduct shows that they are uncircumcised, which is a form of wickedness. But that's another lesson, another form, another way of saying being wicked. But notice what verse 26 says. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, now remember we read earlier what the Gentiles are called uncircumcised. Israel is a circumcised. Mm -hmm. That's another context. You got the spiritual circumcision, the one that's predicated on you keeping the law, not whoever you is. It's go for females. Right. That's what that verse uh, 25 is addressing. All of us. But this right here in 26 is going physical, straight up. Therefore, it's uncircumcised keep the righteousness of the law. Let me tell you, the law got some righteousness. Yes, right. sir. It's got righteousness in it. This is the law that went beyond the cross. If he keep the righteousness of the law, notice, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Watch this. And shall not, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, because that's what the Gentile is. By nature, he's uncircumcised. Because God said, you only told Israel, you only have our notion. Everybody else is considered uncircumcised. In regards, because you got the children in hand, they are considered of the uncircumcised. So the Lord is allowing Paul to bring everybody into bearings so we can all see everyone that's outside of Israel is actually considered uncircumcised. And he says, shall not the uncircumcision which is by nature, if it fulfill the law. Oh, you mean to tell me if, if that will fulfill the law? Notice. Judge D. Oh, you mean to tell me if you fulfill the law, what is he doing? He got the laws, the statutes, the commandments of God. He's fulfilled the law because of right. Up top, it said, keep the righteousness of the law. So he's keeping the righteousness that the Lord has ordained that goes beyond the cross. And he's judging you if you transgress in the law. Okay, who you is? If he can judge you, how come he can't teach you? Hmm. Like the asshole respect the person. You mean tell me that that Gentile that was sitting in your congregation for five years, ten years, and he can judge you, how come he can't teach you? You go, you go be respected for this country, be Israel. The Lord said, "Have not respected a persons with the faith of the Lord." So you transgress, and He could judge you right there. So right here, He said, "If can He, if He fulfill the law, judge thee who by the latter and circumcision doth transgress the law." Now watch this. But He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Uh oh, we don't cross over to the new covenant now, but. Neither is that circumcision which is our in the flesh. Notice, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. So salvation is of him too. Right. Jesus said salvation is of the Jew, so it ain't just on the outside, y'all. It's the one that's got it in the heart. That's why I said, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit. Notice, in the faith. That's what this actually addresses. And not in the left. Just because you got Israel running around this book all day long. Like Brother Matt was telling me, man, you had this Israel come boasting about how they don't know who they're dealing with. Because he got the book. But he was destroying the whole thing by his arrogance and his pride. Mm -hmm. 
This yeah. cause he got the left, but he didn't have the spirit of faith in him. Not the one in the book of Kawhi. He had uh, the spirit of his respect of a person's teacher, whoever that may be. But that is the thing that's passed on amongst us Hebrew Israelites. Now realizing you got to have the circumcision of the heart, and it says, whose praise is not of me, but of who? God. That's what it comes down to. And we're going to see that the graduates praise God because they left the table of devils to be at the table of who? The Lord. So now let's go on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go to uh, 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 1 Timothy 2 and 7. And look at what Paul said about his office. 1 Timothy uh, 2 and 7. 1 Timothy 2 and 7. I want to hone in on Paul because that's when we can get some good, direct understanding of the graduates. Now, we're looking at the teacher. 1 Timothy 2 and 7. I just want to target this right here. Look what Paul said here. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and, I, and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity or truth. So Paul was performing his job. He was teaching the Gentiles. He wasn't throwing them in the lake of fire, y'all. Yeah. He wasn't talking about they can't be saved. And only Israelites going to be saved. Physical Israelites that came across in the whole slave ship going to be saved. The descendants of those people. Now, Paul was a teacher. Of the he was on his job. This is the teacher's resume. Now let's look at the graduate show. Let's go to uh, the first graduate. First Thessalonians 3 and 1. Paul was dangling his trophies. Yes, sir. Just like a professor, professor when they had that, uh, you know, they had the uh, uh, coronation march, you had all your teachers, they were sitting there proud of their what? Proud of their students coming across that, uh, 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 making that walk. That's why when I went with my son graduating, uh, we went to recognize him. Man, how they walk across the stage, man? Ain't y'all teachers proud of y'all students? Right. Yeah, that's nowadays. They don't even do that for eighth grade. I'm like, oh my God. I know. I remember I had a cap and gown for eighth grade and a cap and gown for high school. <sighs> cap and gown. So look at Paul's uh, first cap and gown right here, student right here. Uh, yeah, second, first Thessalonians 3 and 1. I'm like, look at this. First Thessalonians 3 and 1. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. Now watch this. And sent Timothy. It's Timothy, that's what Timothy meant. Our brother and minister of God. You would think he's really ain't read this, man. Wait a minute. How Timothy, uh, he's a minister. Yes. Because Paul was a teacher of Gentiles. And notice. And our fellow laborer. Fellow laborer. He's right there with me. Getting this in. He come to get this work. And notice. In the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So Paul would teach and respect their persons. The protocols and effect institution is solid. And when that Gentile, when Timothy came in, hey, we're going to be where he, how long he been knowing the scriptures? Let's go. Uh, Timothy, uh, I think it's the first Timothy. Your thou is known from a child. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Why was he a minister of God? This Gentile. We're going to 2 Timothy 3 and 15. Because this letter here is to Timothy. He told him, look, at verse 15, 3 and 15, And thou from a child hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So Timothy done put his time in the scriptures, y'all. Let me tell you, you got the Gentiles that ain't put no time in this book and they can't stand up and minister, be ministers of God? I mean, you know, let's think about it. Timothy is actually Paul's first graduate. But we're going to look at some couple of graduates here. Let's go to Acts 
16 and 1 to show you Timothy was a Gentile. Acts 16 and 1. Acts 16, chapter and verse 1. That's why you look at the letters of Paul, you got the Romans, Galatians, talking about groups of people. And then because Paul had a student and a graduate that became a minister of God, he wrote a letter to him. Look, pretty much like a congratulatory. Hey, good job, man. Good job. We send you as a minister of God. And watch this, Acts 16 and 1. And he tells me this guy can't stand over the people of God. <laughs> We've been reading the letters of, of Timothy, man. It, man, there's so many. Boy, look. It's really, we know we're going to Timothy. We be killing them false prophets, y'all. There's some slayers in there. But I'll listen to Timothy, y'all. Hey, minister of God. Like I hear the Jake with we go up with that verse. He didn't know. He hadn't thought about that. Because he had been under that respect of, of person's doctrine for so long, he never had to consider who this was really written to. So right here, Acts 16 and 1. It says, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, same as Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, but and believed. But his father was a Greek. Which means Timothy was a Gentile. That's why Paul was a teacher of the Gentiles. And all his epistles were written to Gentiles, y'all. And Timothy is one of his graduates. So now I want to go uh, uh, to Timothy 1 and 1. First Timothy, sorry. First Timothy 1 and 1. That's why he wrote two letters. He was proud of Timothy, y'all. Proud graduate. He probably valid Victoria. <laughs> okay, he says he called him a minister of God. And we know that his uh, 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 mother was Jewish, which means she was black. And his father was a Greek. But he had known the scriptures for a long time because of his mother being Israel. Yeah, that was a mixed relationship. What they call mix uh, mixed marriage? Yeah. Yeah, that was a mixed marriage. So right here, look what look what uh, Paul told Timothy. And at the top, first Timothy one and one. First Timothy one and one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith. Now, wait a minute. Physically, Timothy was a Gentile. But guess what? When he left that table of devils and head for the table of the Lord and learned, learned the scriptures, he became Paul's son. Call him his son. Look, in the faith. That's why he's a minister of God and a fellow of what? Labor in the gospel of Christ. Timothy is definitely a graduate. Notice, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. Talk about Timothy a little more. Yep, Timothy was a valedictorian. He must have graduated at the head of his class. Okay, Paul was proud of him. To write two letters to this guy. First Timothy uh, four and one, and then we're gonna skip down. Yeah, First Corinthians four and one. Then we'll take a quick look at the other two graduates. I had a couple other ones in there, but uh, time uh, fails me. So look, First Timothy. I'm 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and as stewards of the ministry, uh, mysteries of God. Stewards are managers. Okay. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That a man be found faithful. Now, he said, but with me, it is very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yeah, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? For he that judges me is the Lord. And the same thing is with the Gentiles as a minister of God. It's the same thing. That's why Paul telling him this thing. So let's get down to verse uh, 14. Down to verse 14. I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you, so you have born again. Yes, sir. That Gentile that crossed over the table of devils, 
to the tab we're on. He is born again by the word of God. Go read it in First Peter. When you cross from the table of the Lord, of devils, to the table of the Lord, you are born again. Because you leave that folly back, man, man, woo. What are they on? Mm -mm, you no longer part of that. That's why you call them my sons. My beloved sons, I warn you. No, she said, but though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ. See, Paul letters went out there and was creating instructors. It was it was coming into the school. And look what Paul says, though. Yet you have not many fathers. Because Israel, we the one that set up the institution. We established it by God. Now you get your Gentiles coming in and they learn it. And they become, as they come graduates, they become what? Instructors. That's why he said you have many, you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you know, many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Yes, sir, because he pulled them from the power of Satan unto God. They became born again. I put it like this, not Bible Christians. Let me put it like that. I'm going to do a direct cut to the dry. So they were, to say they were Christians, or what we call the dead Christians, mm -mm, nothing like that. But no, she said, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you. Timothy. So he said, Timothy? Yes, he's a minister of God. Who is my beloved son? Notice, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere, everywhere in every church. So uh, Paul was so proud of Timothy, he said, Timothy teach, as he taught. Yes, sir, it was no respect of persons with Paul. Let's go a little further. Let's go to 2 Timothy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1 Corinthians 16 chapter. 1 Corinthians 16 chapter. Yeah, he was sending Gentiles that were graduates, became instructors. 1 uh, Corinthians, let's go all the way to the 16th chapter and we'll talk about Timothy a little more. We'll go right to the church and then we're going to look at the other two graduates. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 10. Now, Timotheus, come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. So you mean to tell me what was Paul doing? Uh, he was a what? A teacher. So that meant Timothy had become a what? Teacher. As he had done in the Lord, so was Timothy. And, and, and just to kind of nail that in the wall, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Again, he was, Paul was proud of Timothy. Proud of this man. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2 and 1. And call him this, y'all. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be thou, said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So Timothy had graduated to the point where he was telling him, look, you're going to commit to others that, that may do what? Faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also? Because believe it or not, Timothy was a bishop. Let me show you that. That's why he called him. Go and set up. Because therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man walks entangling himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Notice. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully, which means you don't want to do this thing being a respect of persons, Israel. You want to get a student in there, hey, reel them up, teach them up, book them up, sign them up, hey, faith from them, hey, he good, he believes, well. he baptized, water dips, he done put his time in, then he could go forth from the institution, y'all. And look, let's go to uh, 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 the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter, and this is what I chose this Jake. And he didn't realize that this was talking to a Gentile. He had been under that respect of persons. And so when we read this, he was like, That's right, man. I had called it that. This is Paul telling the Gentile to do this. And it's 2 Timothy 4 and 2. 
This is what Paul told Timothy. Look. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all the little suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine. Paul was telling Timothy to do this. Which we take as an example and being an example of a belief. This is what we ought to do. Paul addressed this to Timothy in the raw. That's what I meant with this. In the raw, because he was proud of Timothy being a minister of God. And he said, for the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, just that he to themselves teaches having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And this is what we used to run around, you know, showing the false prophets. Look, you, you teach the fables, so I'm going to rebuke you. Amen. Uh, hey, Israel, take a look at who this is addressed to. This is Paul telling the Gentiles to do this. Okay? And watch what he says in verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So Paul was proud of Timothy, a graduate. And let's go, we're going to look at another graduate in a minute. Let's go look at, well, uh -uh, I want to move on. I want to go to third chapter. 1 Timothy 3, right? 1 Timothy 3. Let me go skip through this. Because he gave his graduate titles. Mm. Let's look at this title of his graduate, y'all. Yes, sir. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. I was wondering, why ain't this in the Old Testament? Because our job is to make graduates. Our job is to make Turn them from the power of Satan to God. And then we train them up. All the way till they become this right here, y'all. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, oh, what's the bishop, y'all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Think about it now. Everybody run around tell them, Bishop so and so, this a bishop so. We're talking men that ain't rookies. Right. We're talking about men that are over teachers and pastors. So he said, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Did he tell Timothy, look, men commend teachers to men, faithful men? Mm -hmm. See, our graduates out of the institution of Israel become bishops. Notice, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruling well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? This is a bishop he's talking about. But he called this is under what? A Gentile. This is to a Gentile. Timothy. Outstanding graduate. He said, look, a bishop. Now watch this. Not a novice that's being lifted up in pride. He falls into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Now watch this. Likewise, the deacons must be great. Oh, so, they, so these are graduate titles, y'all. They become bishops and deacons out of the institution of God set up, y'all. Be the protocol, okay? They become deacons. He said, not double tongue, not giving too much wine, not greedy or filthy, filthy lucre, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. Because think about it. The Gentiles are sitting at the table of what? Devils. Now, Paul let these graduates know this is how you conduct yourself, being a graduate out of the institution or the protocol that God set up. So now I want to go on. Um, let's go and look at Titus, y'all. Let's go to Galatians 2 and 1. Titus is the next graduate. Titus, we're going to go to uh, Galatians 2 and 1. Yes, sir, Paul had graduates. Gentiles, those ministers of God, able to teach. Bishops, had to get, they graduated to the point where they were called bishops. They got up there. Go by what he tells the Gentiles about bishops. If they wasn't teachers, y'all. Well, it's almost like me telling my little daughter, hey, look, 
You're a valedictorian out of the Institute of uh, 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 Lockheed Corporation. Yeah, that's exactly what you said, huh? Okay, if it did, if they would So, yes, they were teachers over God's people, over the people of God. Because they graduated from the protocol. When we do our job, we, we make bishops. We make deacons. And watch this. Tim Titus is the other graduate. Galatians 2 and 1. Galatians, second chapter. Oh, I'll read it here. Galatians 2 and verse 1. Check this out. Look what Paul said here. He said, Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. I went up by revelation and communication unto them that preached the gospel, unto them that, oh, sorry, that communicated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, read that again. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation, lest by any means I should run and have run in vain. Because the protocol is in effect, y'all. Israel, we the institution. You come in and understand, you got to get it right with the institution, the protocol, and then know what Paul said. But neither uh, Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren on the way was brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So I went here to show that Titus was a Greek, and he was circumcised. It wasn't in the right context of how you should be done when you get circumcised. Nevertheless, he was circumcised. And let's go to Titus 1 and uh, Titus 1 and 1. Titus was another graduate. Philemon the graduate. That's why these letters are listed in here. Titus 1, and watch, watch how Paul set this one up, y'all. I was like, wow. We don't go, I'm going to cut right to the chase, though, because this is what Paul wrote to Timothy. Titus. Watch this. He called Titus something. Titus 1 and 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, peace, sorry, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause I left thee in Crete. That thou should have set in order the things that I wanted and ordained elders in every city as I had appointed thee. This is a graduate, y'all. Titus was a graduate. Titus was ordaining elders. He went on to show him, look, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of rioting or unruliness. That's why we have to watch our kids, especially those of us in other ministry. Oh, boy, they talking about the preacher's kids. Anyway, that's another lesson. Move right along. Look, verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. Why would you probably be telling him a bishop? Well, that's exactly what Titus was. He was a graduate. With honors, obviously. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Right. Who taught him, y'all? Yes, sir. He came out the institution of Israel, the protocol, <coughs> a product of the protocol, y'all. That he may be able by sound doctrine of, notice, to exhort and to convince the gang says, who is those, y'all? Anybody. This Gentile, we teach this Gentile, he should be able to stand up against these gangs. And I know some outstanding Gentiles. I'm like, man, you're welcome at the BCOG party. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Outstanding graduate. Got his degree. Yes, sir. Notice. And look why he said that. He know us, y'all. But there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Child, please. Israel, 
And we talking about dead Israel. And so, well, no, you got some of them that's keep the Sabbath. That's unruly and vain talkers. <coughs> Straight up. But Paul was telling Titus, a graduate, look, these unruly and vain talkers, especially they among us, <coughs> whose mouth must be stopped. Yes, sir. Why would you tell this, this Gentile whose mouth, they got to stop this Israelite from their foolishness, if he could stand over and teach them? That's why I look at this only brother with that respect the person real bad. I ain't put no name out there, but uh, we be the priest of God of all people. I can't tell you. Therefore, he said, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not for filthy lucre's sake, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, even beasts, evil beasts, slow bellies. Notice what Paul is telling to this graduate. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. That they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, it's nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. No, she said they profess that they know God. Who is he talking about? We always take this to the point where it's talking about anybody. Well, Israel's love to know God. Well, up high, he said, you got the um, you got the circumcision that are vain talkers and deceivers. Because God gave us the word. But look, our actions, that's what the Lord is looking at. And you got people that profess that they know God. But notice, but in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So now I want to move on to the next graduate right quick. I want to run down this list of graduates, y'all. Uh, Philemon. Let's go to Philemon. Philemon is the next book right after Titus. You see, those that are not recognizing the grad, who the graduates are and don't have Gentile ministry, want, don't want, have a desire to have a Gentile, they don't even bother this stuff. This is irrelevant to them. Bang. But we have to understand our job, Israel. We the teachers, we make graduates that they become teachers and bishops. And what? That's why he's good out there. Look, that they uh, that we're gonna read it. We're gonna read it that they may be acceptable. Their offer is gonna be accepted. And we're gonna read what's called a priesthood. I'm gonna get to that. But moving right here is Philemon. Look at Philemon. Now watch how Paul dropped this thing in Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Fellow, that means like I'm standing in the roster as Gentiles you may have stand right here too. Because we fellow laborers in the gospel. Philemon is a graduate, y'all. To our beloved Philippa and Chalipus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. So we are about going to make ministers that are able to have Gentiles that are able to have churches in their houses, y'all. And look, grace be to you and peace from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move on to the next uh, grad, set of graduates. That's Philemon. I could have gone some more, but I'm kind of running on my time. Yeah. Let me go to Colossus, fourth chapter. We're going to go to Colossus 4 and 5. Philemon was a graduate. Titus is a graduate. Timothy is a graduate. Now let's look at these various graduates right here. Y'all. Colossus, fourth chapter, and verse... Uh, we gonna skip around a little bit here, cause I'm almost done. Actually, I got four places after we come out of this chapter. Here we go. Colossians, fourth chapter, and verse five. This is walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer how he ought to answer every man. All my state shall Tachikius declare unto you, who is a blood brother, notice, and a faithful minister. This is another Gentile, y'all. And a fellow servant in the Lord. There's no respect to the persons. Once you graduate, you come out the institute, you've been taught by Israel, you got this book in you, he called him a faithful minister. Gentile. 
and a fellow servant in the Lord, whom I sent unto you for the same purpose that he, notice now Paul didn't say he was doing this. Paul said, I sent him to you for the same purpose that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts with Amesius, a faithful and blood brother who is one of you. Paul said, look, he's a Gentile. Notice, they shall make known unto you all things which I've done here. Now let's skip down to verse 17 because uh, like I said, I, I, my time kind of going short here. But look what it says about this guy in verse 17. Skip down all the way down. We're almost at the last verse of this chapter. Verse 17. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord. He can't stand in front of us and teach this book. Child, please. No, he said, which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Wow. Because we are the protocol. We look back and see how, man, look, we don't do our job. I can read, woe is us if we don't preach the gospel. Woe is us. But look, this man, Archippus, had a ministry which the Lord gave to him. And Paul was encouraging him that thou fulfill it. Now, I want to go to uh, 1 Peter 2 and 6. And watch how Peter, the one that opened the door for the Gentile, watch what he said, y'all. 1 Peter 2 and 6. That's why I saw all the brothers, I'm, and I saw, man, I'm like, man, that bad boy skyrocketed overnight, 300 and some odd comments. Some Israel was understanding, some of them had respect their person, so all we can do is pray for them like the Lord showed me. Man, just drop a lesson out there, man, so because it ain't being, it, it, you know, that respected person among Israel is, uh, uh, is bad. It is a bad, it's a bad appetite among us. So right here, 1 Peter 2 and um, 2 and 6. He said, For wherefore, sorry, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, which is Jesus, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. That's why the Gentile, if he's talked about the Jesus we bring, and we do mean we gotta bring him. He would not be confounded. So why can't he teach over the people of God? Okay? But he can. Oh, watch this. Where unto therefore which believe, uh, unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient and the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. That's talking about us y'all. Israel, we disallowed and but the same became the head of the corner and the stone of stumbling a rock of offense, even to them who stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. That's why the Lord said, I got Israel blinded in part. Half see, the other half don't see. Because you got something that's important. That's why I see brothers running around talking about the books. Now, I, he appointed to be disobedient. He one of those one appointees. <laughs> anyway, but look what he said here, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him, notice now, brace yourself, who has called you out of darkness. Who says he called out of darkness, y'all? The Gentiles. Into his marvelous light. That was Paul's job. This is our job. We bear the light. Didn't it read the guy to them now a blind? Right. A light to them that in the what? Darkness? He calling them a royal priesthood, a holy nation, because they partake of us. They come into the institution, y'all. And notice, he said, which in time past were not a people. Who is this? Hold that spot right quick. We're going to read Romans 10 and 19. Right quick, we're coming right back. I almost forgot that. Dude. Romans 10 and 19. And then we're coming right back. Romans 10. And 19. Romans 10 and 19. We'll be going right back. He said, but I say, did not Israel know? Now remember when we were earlier, he that know his father's will got beat with much rights. Ones with the Lord. Israel, we know. 
That's why he said, did not Israel know? Watch this. First, Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation will I anger you. Now look, but Isaiah is very bold and said, I found in them that saw me not. I was made manifest to them that asked not after me, but to Israel, he said, all the day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gang-saying people. And we got that respected person on us so bad, we still gang-saying being a respected a person, and that is not good. But let's go back. I'm going to go back to 1 Peter 2 and uh, 10. So we know we're talking about Gentiles being called a royal priesthood. They hear that. That's why you saw the title of bishop, deacons. You saw Paul was telling them to go and ordain elders. Okay? Look, verse 10. Which in time past was not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained what? Mercy. Now let's move quickly to uh, 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 St. John 10 and 15. Because Jesus said something here while he was on the earth. St. John 10 and 15. And then we got one, then one last place after this. Call them out of darkness. Has come to the protocol. That's why he drew Cornelius. Oh, he was a devout prayer warrior. But he had to be told. He had to be instructed by the protocol that God set up. The father give to the son. Son give to the angel. And you give to Israel, we go and teach all nations, and guess what? So they can come out that table of devils, and then the ones that come on the table of the Lord, they grow up and graduate in that institutional understanding. But he ain't dealt so with any other nation, y'all. So right here, St. John 10 and 15, watch what the Lord said. Uh, As the Father knows me, even so now I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Mm. Notice, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So why can't that Gentile stand here at the Bible Christians God to teach if he's been brought up in this book? God please. It's one shepherd. This book is bigger than me. And your Whatever you want to call your head and all of that. Because we sitting under one shepherd and these Gentiles that have been raised and taught a product of the protocol, that's what he's talking about. That's why he said Titus, Timothy, mentioned the, the titles of bishop and deacons among them. And we know that the word title bishop done spread over churches. We know nowadays a bishop heads over, he's over pastor. Okay? Now look. Uh, did we finish that? Yeah. So them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Because they're sitting at the table of the Lord. And they got to be instructed. So now let's go to our last place, Isaiah 56. This is the end of this right here. This is where we end with that. Israel is the teacher. Gentile is the student. The ones that raised up and the one that can stand up to the roster, that's the graduate. That's the graduate. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want to be a uh, 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 glory in the hey, Look at all our graduates. Man, look. Look at our instructors that we raised up. And look, that's why the Lord said this right here. Uh, Isaiah 56 and 1. Thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. Notice now it says, Blessed is the man. What man? That doeth this. And the son of man that laid hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. How's the stranger going to know about the Sabbath except he be taught? How? He got to come through the institution of Israel. He got to come through the protocol and be a product to know what this Lord's Sabbath is. To so know what he's saying. But watch this. It says, Neither let the son of the stranger, they go the stranger, that had joined himself to the Lord, speak, saying, The Lord had utterly separated me, separated me from his people. That's why I can let a Gentile. Man, you go to this book. I, I want to say, I don't hear what you got to say. What you going to get you? 
Because he ain't separate. We only one shepherd, y'all. Right. That's why I said, have not the faith of Jesus Christ for respected persons. They come through the protocol, right? Bang, all right, you got this book, boom. Mm. You got gravity? Mm. You track it? Uh. You been in, you will put your time in? Mm. Hey, let me see what the Lord put on you. Mm. Proud instructor. Teacher. Just like we have nowadays. You have professor there. Man, I'm glad my wife got a master's degree. Hey, they're proud of her coming out. Man, you know, you got various professors that got students that they're proud of. That's how Israel ought to be, we ought to be saved and say, these men of God that Israel, we did our job. Y'all, we went with, we've been teaching all nations. And watch this, what it says right here. Uh, neither let the son of the stranger that had joined us to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord that utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Uh, but thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Notice, even to them will I give in my house within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that should not be cut off. Because they don't left the table of devils, y'all. And they sitting at the table of the Lord. Now watch this. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. I always ask this question, how are you going to love the name of the Lord if it's only in Hebrew? Right. Okay? Well, you know how many different languages out there the strangers speak. You got from Germany to French, Italian, Russian, Swahili, Polish, Japanese, and French. All these languages that the strangers speak. And the name of the Lord is in there. So now they're going to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting, how are you going to know how to keep the Sabbath up here at all? Which is our job to teach. He's a student. We raise him up. And he becomes the keeper of the <coughs> Sabbath, which means he's teaching. He's a teacher. Then it says, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Notice, their burnt offerings. How are they going to do burnt offerings, y'all? If we go back there in the burnt office, it was only the priest, uh, priesthood of Aaron can do it. How they gonna do burnt office? They said they be taught. And they gotta be priests, like Peter said, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Notice. And their sacrifices, yes, sir, which shall be accepted upon my altar. How they gonna get there, y'all? They got to graduate. They got to be graduates. Notice. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, so they're going to respect their purchase. God got his protocol. God know who his gracious is. They're going to all come down and sit in his house as a house of prayer for all people. Because then he tell us to teach all nations. Yep. Come on now. So I should not have no problem with no Korean that know this book. Don't see preaching in English. Stand right here at the BCOG, whether you from a uh, few Korean, you from uh, Yugoslavia, whether you from down over there in Germany. Hey, look, you drop book, you go from wedropbook.com, boom, it's on. And I seen that in some books online. I'm like, hey, you welcome here. So look, verse 8. The Lord God was gathered the outcast either, because we are. Cause you got some hardcore respect to perk, man. That brother teaching from we can nobody stand in our congregation itself. He black. That's that's what they trying to say. But like I said, I ain't saying they're racist. I'm just saying that respect to a person amongst Israel is not a good thing and it's festering among us. We gotta come out of that if we're gonna do our job effectively. Right. Right. Effective ministers. Let my brother tell you that, man. We had one of them, he was like, I know, man. That Anyway, but he called, he bragging he Israel. All right. But the Lord said, Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, yet will I gather also, gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. That's Jesus talking right there. Then we read what Jesus said, I've got others of this fold that are not of this fold. I got others which are not of this fold. I'm sure bring them. This is the Lord speaking right there. So I hope you guys understand about who Israel is, the teacher. And who the graduate is. This concludes this lesson. So with that being said, uh, yeah, that, that thing had to come forth. Um,